what are your children's relationships like with your sister? So like with oh, yeah. Aunt Don or Aunt Diana. Mm -hmm. I honestly thought we'd be a little closer. Wait, before we go on, don't forget Christmas is coming and you can still download your free Christmas planner. Plus our gift guide is live full of meaningful gifts. Check out the links below. Like if I, if I think back to 15 years ago when you were starting your family yeah, and then you started with two girls, I, my expectation would have been like, we're going to be butts. I'm going to be cool on Dinah. Yeah. In fact, I think I called myself we're that. We're going to go shopping. Yeah. Like, and I'll be that like thing. safe place and yeah. everything. Um, but I think the way we ended up, I got married later and the yeah. way our families have staggered and then we live. Because that was another question, how far apart do you live? We live 24 minutes apart. Yeah. It's like just far enough yeah. that we don't just pop in or mm -hmm. Saturday mornings. Yeah, you know. we don't have enough like daily interaction. Yeah. I mean, we see each other, I mean, with the kids, maybe every two to four weeks. Yeah. I don't know. That was another question. And that's how not often. really enough. So, but so. I do think as our kids get a little older, so like, for example, now it's mm -hmm. harvest time. And so we're trying to coordinate with our brother because you guys live right down the road from the family farm of when he'll be harvesting corn so that Declan and Adley can go ride in the combine. And I see more of that happening. Yeah, or even being able to travel together. Like we did go to Florida yeah. this past winter yeah. together, which was nice. And because the kids get along great. I cannot oh, yeah. believe how just sweet your kids are with my kids. Mm -hmm. And so I, so maybe it'll, it'll increase. I think as your kids get a little bit older, I think we'll yeah. do more together. But otherwise, yeah, I think your kids are closer with Princeton's sisters. Because they're close in age. Age and we're close in proximity yeah yeah and it's okay i mean we yeah. both know that they could count on we our yeah. kids could count on it either of us and maybe. adeline you can still call me anytime <laughs> middle of the night no judgment i'll be there yeah she's gonna make good decisions but just you know it's even maggie. if you're making a good decision <laughs> maggie my little protege <laughs> got you girl yeah <laughs> okay yes i'm gonna help you get through life and adolescence oh, oh that's kind of a good one yeah how, okay, this one I like, though, because this is a minimalism one. How do you stay on top of towel laundry, like kitchen and bathroom hand towels and washcloths? Well, probably why they're asking is because some people wash that in hot to, like, sanitize them. <sighs> Never done that no. uh, a single time in my life. So I throw everything in together. It doesn't gross me out. We're, we're, but neither of us are germ phobes, which I, I'd say that in not in a bad way, no. but like we don't care. I think growing up on a farm, especially like... It was dirty all the like, time. <laughs> so, well, I thought what you were going to say was we only have one towel for every person. Well, we do. And we only, like kitchen towels, I have like two or three. Yeah. And so they just get thrown in with the other laundry. Yeah. That bad? So, but also I just, when I, the way I think about bath towels is you're clean when you're using it. Mm -hmm. And so we just hang them up to dry and then wash them like once a week. Yeah. Or, we reuse them yeah. multiple times before we wash them. So that, so that actually, for I think if you have, I think less inventory helps. Sure, yeah, because you have one. to keep them going through like the laundry. one per person, and mm -hmm. then but yeah, if you're but if you're trying to sanitize it more, it might be a little bit harder. But if you wanna, if you wanna take a chill backseat approach, then. <laughs> I don't know. We, I don't think we've ever gotten sick from our towels I, or anything. I don't think so. And but how would you know, right? See, like for my kids, five bottoms and five tops, and yeah. so we basically almost get it to a week before we have to wash. Mm -hmm. So that keeps it also like I. So I feel like any one person or any one thing gets washed once a week in our house, and that just yeah. is enough to kind of keep things moving through, and mm -hmm. it doesn't feel overwhelming to me even with all these little kids. No. Your kids are folding and putting them away now. Well, what well, we do fold, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My husband refuses to reuse towels. He's definitely a germ <laughs> You know, yeah. And like that, then you have to work with that. And that's, you know, yeah. some people don't eat leftovers. So you just got to kind of work through some of those things and develop mm -hmm. systems that work. Maybe make him wash the towels. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Probably doesn't work like that, huh? Um... Have you or Dawn ever dealt with anxiety or depression? If so, how serious was it and how did you overcome it? So I don't think to any serious degree, but mm -hmm. so many of us, I know my online Bible study group is here um, and, and people watching so many of us today. And we actually were just talking about this in my Bible study because it is coming at us from every angle, even along those germ fold lines. On Instagram, there was like a doctor and he was saying, don't wear your shoes in the house yeah. because 90% of germs will transfer from your feet to the floor and then your pets, your kids get sick and, and that's fine. Like whatever helps you feel safe and happy and healthy. But I, it's just amazing how like typically you think of going on social media just to zone out, to see what yeah. your friends are doing, whatever. But now the fear is coming at us from every 
angle mm -hmm. and then you get world events mixed in there and even some of like the christian people that i love to follow you know they're taking on very serious world events mm -hmm. and so all of a sudden you're in this like weird mix of oh, cute diana had her baby don't wear your shoes in the house like this craziness is happening on the other side of the world yeah. and it's just like such a mix of is the world safe mm -hmm. am i safe and so I just empathize mm -hmm. and it, I just feel like it's never been harder to protect and preserve and maintain our emotional health. Yeah. I do remember like, I, I didn't have like severe postpartum depression, yeah. but I do remember I have, after having babies and being like, oh, this is what this is like. I am so sorry. It is horrible. Yeah. Like, um, and I, I haven't dealt with it so much personally, but I do have people close to me that have dealt with it and it's horrible. It's never ending. It is exhausting. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't want to be this way, but I don't know what else to do. Um, they seem happy. Why can't I just be happy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and some days feeling like you are on top and you're winning and then other days just feeling drugged back down again. And so I did just see, and maybe we can link to it, Diana, um, Dr. John Deloney did a video where he actually walked a gentleman through um, like kind of a protocol, a, a 90 day protocol for his anxiety. And it was actually very simple things, walking, not watching the news, um, having skin to skin contact with someone four days a week, uh, going out with a friend. And the guy didn't even do it all perfectly, but his experience through that was so cool. So I think we can link to that video um, because it just, it felt doable and practical yeah. to me. And so I thought that was kind of cool. And I think a lot of us too in our online Bible study have noticed how just having some like-minded friends and consistently every Saturday we were studying the Bible. So even if you don't open your Bible the rest of the week, yeah. like we're there, you know, and we're digging in and learning something new mm -hmm. that can make a huge difference because that was one of the other questions. So membership might be opening at the beginning of January. So you can sign up for the wait list for that. Um, but one of the questions was, can you imagine living life without your faith in God? And like when we talk about this topic, I can't. Like I, mm -hmm. I can't because I don't know where you find hope and how you get through. And actually one of our members in the group was sharing her story of coming out of atheism. And she was saying like, and if this is you, like I wanna empathize because atheism is actually a faith. And what happens is you end up putting your faith in you. Yeah. So now every problem that you face, you have to be the solution. And if you don't solve it, now you're the problem. And where do you turn? And so it, you know, so I think when life is going okay, it can be, you can kind of think like, okay, mm -hmm. I can get through, like, we're going to be fine. I don't need to have a faith system. But then when the rubber really hits the road, like you have to believe in something bigger, you know? And I feel like all of these things in the media and the news is, is warring so much with our faith as well. And so that's why it's important for us to hang out, you know, whatever that looks like church communities. I know sometimes that's not easy, whatever that looks like asking the Lord for like-minded friends or church family, because we have to stick together and we have to stay grounded in our faith or it, yeah, that, all the handholding in the world won't overcome, you know, yeah. the pressures of this world. Yeah. And with all that being said, there's there was a question like, have you other ha, have either of you ever felt like you needed a break from the from church and drama that can happen there? And it's tough because man, the Christian faith there is a lot of messed up things in it too. And I have felt a little disillusioned over the last couple of years. And so I don't even like the words like deconstructing your faith or whatever, but there is a point where we all uh, have there to... There was a question about that, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so there is a point where I think we have to take what we've been taught and what we've learned over the years and really figure out what we believe for ourselves. Yeah. And, um, and be able to say, I do believe in this. I don't agree with this. There are things that I have some big issues with and I don't mm -hmm. agree with that. But at the end of the day, like, yes, I absolutely still believe there is a God and a loving God and... And yes, there, it coincides with really horrible things happening. And that still does not always make sense. Um, but I do feel like as I've gone through that process for myself, I'm much more at peace with everything. Well, and I feel like I've watched you. Like people expect a pastor to like read their Bible or pray every day or whatever. And I don't do it perfectly, just so you know. Anyway, but I've watched you develop these habits of Bible study, like morning and night of knowing like, hey, there's difficult things going on. This is what I know I need, mm -hmm. you know, and just 
like that you like literally cling to it like that yeah. is your grounding should i share a kind of a cool story the other day so mm -hmm. um i have a group of three friends where we've been like faith friends right like we're we like we'll pray together and do bible studies together or whatever and so um it started out as a small group and then, from church yeah, yeah but kind of the gals got along better than everything else um <laughs> it was fine uh so they were like there is this call to fast going on like we're all gonna do it and I was, it was so, it was such a busy time. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I want to fast. What will that look like? Guess where the Bible recap was for that day. Daniel, oh, what chapter is it? Where he, he literally talks about the Daniel fast, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm like, thank you for being so literal <laughs> because like, I don't necessarily trust my own discernment right now. That was a Saturday morning. Go to church Sunday morning. Guess what book we're studying for the next four weeks? Daniel. Daniel. Oh, wow. And it was just, it was just really fun. And we don't always have to look for things like that, you know, or signs or whatever, but it is fun. The more you're in the word and the more you're doing these things, like the more those fun things happen. Yeah. Right. And so, um, it's just these like confirmations along the way. And honestly, it was the easiest fast I've ever done in my Isn't life. There was so much grace on it yeah. and it felt like it felt meaningful and purposeful. And so again, it was like this combination of me developing this habit, having great resources like the Bible recap and having friends around me who even mm -hmm. say, Hey, let's fast together, yeah. you know, like to have people like that. And I know like I'm seeing comments about your Bible study and, yeah. and how you all support each other. Like yeah. it's invaluable. We actually, we do like seasonal book clubs and we've been going through the book, praying like monks living like fools. And it just has so many practical prayer, like practices that you, so it's kind of like find what works for you. But we uh -huh. went through this exercise last week of confession. And oh. so we actually took time and I didn't make everybody do it together on live on zoom. I was thinking about Catholic upbringing. We, <laughs> I know. we talked about that actually. Yeah. We wrote it down in our journal. And mm -hmm. when you hear from the Lord for yourself, yeah. whether it's reading the Bible and like, Oh look, he's taking me to Daniel. And I think he's reinforcing that he wants me to fast. Like there was grace for that. Mm -hmm. When I quieted myself and some people are like, I don't know if I hear from the Lord, but if, if you can just take that leap of faith, like I'm sensing something right now or something is coming to my mind and I'm going to yeah. write that down and trust that's from him. I couldn't believe how much that stuck with me through the week. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Lord was telling me not to be such a cranky pregnant person. The people around me. It was so funny. It was so good. Awesome. It was so needed. And so <laughs> it's just amazing how, but I do feel like we need people around us that are helping mm -hmm. to either lead if this isn't, experience that you've had before or you know to encourage us on or to pray together yeah. or whatever that might look like and that group I think we haven't talked about it for a while but you really prayed for the mm -hmm. Lord to bring people like that into your life yeah and so yeah and that's what someone asked like what church or religion are you and I we've kind of been it all and we mm -hmm. grew up Catholic and uh, I was saved in like an evangelical church or what I mean saved just like really made my faith my own I'll link to our faith story um Mm -hmm. video but now we're both actually in like kind of like assemblies of god um churches mm -hmm. and so but i just love the whole church and mm -hmm. in our group too we have people of all denominations and i love love the reverence of the catholic faith i love faith i love the cathedrals like mm -hmm. a lot of you know modern church buildings are really uninspired <laughs> <laughs> you know um yeah. sorry i didn't mean to be a cranky pregnant person but um anyway and so there's just things i love about every faith tradition and then there's things that every faith tradition has kind of messed up along the way or yeah. hurts and pains and things that are really hard mm -hmm. and church pain is real and so mm -hmm. that's something too like i feel so passionately about the local church and even with my bible study i'm like if you can find in-person community like please do that as well like we need people around us and if you've been hurt by the church i just again i'm really sorry and i just pray that the lord will bring healing and help to bring a safe community for you to be a part of yeah i love what monique says i absolutely am very grateful to have the bible study group it's hard to find like-minded women of god so until i find it in my area this has been such a blessing and i feel so grateful thanks monique i feel the same way <laughs> Oh, I get to do it from home. I get to like be a pastor from home. Yeah. It's like, it's been just the greatest thing. I'm so grateful. Okay, let's end up with something like really fun. Oh, someone asked on, okay, this is for Tom. Okay. Could he please do a few decluttering episodes for guys? Yeah, he needs to do more of that. Yeah. He did one on the garage a while back, but it did really well. I'm like, Tom, 
you know, that will always do well. Yeah, so he should. He actually, they just poured the floor for his shop yesterday. Okay. And so he's, he'll, there's more to do, but then he'll be moving into it. So I'm, so I'm sure there'll be okay. lots of decluttering and stuff going on. And like organize that. with me. Yeah. <laughs> he probably won't be getting bins from the container store. No, I don't know. So another thing that happened in addition to this study while Princeton was traveling is I tackled his closet, which is something I don't normally do. I'll only take out things if they're like in really bad disrepair, really old or grungy, that kind of thing. Um, but, oh, actually, no, this is what happened. He came home and he likes to shop there and brought 10 t-shirts home. And I was like, hey, you remember? Notice I'm telling this at the end of the video. He would be fine with it, but I don't think it I was like, hey, remember, we're like minimalists. <laughs> he's like, I know, I just couldn't choose it, you know, and stuff. So I took two garbage bags out of, he has like a casual, we have three like organizers in our closet yeah. and he has two of them. And so he has a casual one and his work clothes, his like dress shirts. I took two garbage bags out, one dress shirts and one other wow. like sweaters and tops and, yeah. and things like that. And then I kind of felt a little guilty. And he said, hey, can I go through that stuff? And so I said, yes, they are in garbage bags in the closet in the guest bedroom. Oh, I don't feel like this ends well. It ends great. They are still sitting there. He has never oh, touched nice. them. Yeah. Because okay. you think, yeah, I want to know what... Like time will telling them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to know what I lost. I want to I wanna be able to give input on He's that. He's just wearing the new shirts. Precisely. Yep. And mm -hmm. he got new dress shirts that look really nice. Yep. And so I was like, you are not going to miss any of that old stuff. No. And... You know, sometimes we think we're going to get back down. He is going to get back down to his regular size, which for a dude, it takes like, what, two minutes and stuff. But it'll all be there. Still pregnant, like right? <laughs> Baby Moses is here, but not yet, actually. Diana, come pass your sins. Be nice. Be nice. No, seriously, he has like two pounds to lose and everything will fit again. And it's just like not fair. So that's fine. I'm really happy for him. But anyway, so, uh, but anyway good story because he said, can I look through that stuff? But then it, like really, once you get into it, yeah, it's gonna He's be too fine. busy too. Yeah, so. and, and in, a, in a month I'll be like, hey, we're just gonna donate that, and he'll be like, what? Yep. Donate what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah. So, Father, thank you for this time, just to hang out, Lord, uh, for us all to spend time together as friends, Lord Jesus, and and Father, I just pray for the different topics that we touched on. I pray for those who are experiencing anxiety and depression right now, Lord, Father, that you would lift the weight of the world from their shoulders. Father, that you would help them to see that our souls are not made for all of the worry and fear and concerns of this world. So Father, help us to protect our hearts, help us to protect the inputs, and help us to grow even more in our faith and our trust and our hope in you. And Father, I pray for close friendships. Lord, I pray for girlfriends, best friends, church community, Lord, where we can thrive together. We can share, Lord, our fears and our hopes and our dreams. We can encourage each other on. So for those who are looking for deeper friendships, Lord God, I pray that you would bring divine relationships, Lord, and you would prepare us. Help us to be good friends, Lord, and help us to be fully present in the relationships that you've gifted us with. And so, Father, I pray, and I just pray for the desires of, of our hearts, Lord, for those who are longing for a spouse, um, those who are longing for children, Lord Jesus, Father, who, those who need gainful employment, Lord God, I just pray that, Lord, in your sovereign goodness, Lord, that you would provide. And, Father, that we would continue to seek you as our provider. So Father, I thank you. I just pray that you would fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. You would lead us, Lord, in wisdom and grace, Father, and that everything we do and say would glorify you. So I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.